This, of course, coming at a time when we have long awaited the reopening of theaters in China is expected to happen very soon. But at the same time, it won't be equal to pre-pandemic levels. We're talking about just showing half the number of movies or so. Uh, what is your outlook uh, for demand coming from China? Well, it's nice that we finally have certainty from the Chinese government. They announced that the theaters will reopen on July 20th which is next week, and I think it'll be over um, over a few days. Uh, they're going to open at only 30% of capacity, and they're going to open with reduced shows. But it's important to note that they're going to open with library content, meaning not new movies, movies that have been seen before, at a discounted price. So one way to think about it is the first week or two will be kind of a dress rehearsal to get the bugs out of the system, make sure it's really safe. And obviously that's a paramount concern to us and all the exhibition community in China. Make sure the protocols are followed. And then once, um, once things go back to a smooth level, then you'll see some of those restrictions starting to loosen. And at the time they'll loosen, that's when new bigger movies will open. Richard, we had today Netflix report earnings and really big numbers for its own movies like Extraction, for example. So are you concerned that post-pandemic there could be a fundamental change when it comes to the theatrical model? And how would that affect you? I, I, I'm not. I mean, especially IMAX shows blockbuster movies in a way you can't see them at, at home. I don't know how you all have dealt with the pandemic, but... I love my wife, I love my TV, but I can't wait to get out and go to a movie. And I think that's the way a lot of people feel. And you have to remember the movie business is largely, you know, aimed at millennials. And I think they're gonna wanna, you know, especially when they know it's safe, run out of their houses and go to movies. If you look at streaming recently, and you probably saw Netflix fall in the aftermarket, you know, it peaked early on in the pandemic. But it's been coming down uh, fairly significantly a lot of territories from the data I read. And, you know, it's great. I, I stream at the right time. But it doesn't ex replace the social, cultural, shared experience of a movie. Richard, we heard from the Attorney General William Barr today criticizing U.S. entertainment uh, tech and film studios for collaborating with China and, and kind of doing their work for them were the words that he used. Are you concerned about the geopolitical overlay as we have an, an administration that is coming down with sanctions on Beijing and things are worsening on those tensions? Well, I mean, nobody likes to see tensions between the world's two largest economies. But our China business, IMAX China, is actually listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. And many of our investors there are mainland Chinese holders. And then the parent company owns about 70% of the Chinese subsidiary. I mean, we've been there for all, about 20 years. Um, we've had great experiences. The IMAX brand is really important in China. It brings people to shopping malls. It helps the Chinese economy. Uh, the Chinese consumers really like U.S. blockbuster films as well as Chinese blockbuster films. And I, I don't think that's going to change. So do you expect the Chinese government to raise its quota for the number of foreign films that screens in China? Or does your growth really rely on that happening? It doesn't rely on that happening. Um, there's already a provision on the import quota that allows extra IMAX films. Um, it, literally, it says that in the regulation. So I think it's about 35 films right now that we could get in. And an IMAX film typically plays for one to two weeks. So we don't rely on an expansion of that. Our last year was a record year for IMAX in China. Um, we beat our year before by, I think, 10 or 15 percent. So, I mean, it would be great to get more in, but we don't need that. Our business is very strong there. What about your business here in the U.S.? Because theater reopenings have been really a mixed bag. What are your thoughts on potential theater bankruptcies? I think the theater, the exhibition industry, and again, to clarify, we license our technology to exhibitors around the world. And we have about 1,750 screens. 
So we, we, we don't directly invest. We're an asset light model. But most of the exhibitors in North America have really done a great job restructuring their balance sheets. So AMC, for example, raised $800 million. Uh, last week, Cineplex in Canada raised $275 million. Um, Cinemark raised over $250 million. So they've recapitalized, as you know, there's been good access to the public markets here in the U.S. So I think they all have a lot of staying power. I'm not really concerned about that. Will you make the film going public wear masks, Richard, in your cinemas? Do you think this is a public health issue or a political one? So again, um, we don't own cinemas. We're in other people's cinemas. Uh, but we've been working on a manifesto and we've been working with all the major exhibitors around the world. And I think masks are essential and I think uh, masks will be required everywhere. And I think it's a good idea. I think we want the public to feel safe. Uh, the evidence is uncontrovertible that masks create a safer environment. So people should wear masks. Richard, do you think there's an existential crisis for businesses like cinemas anywhere where there's large public gatherings? Because there is a real view out there that the only way that we can get this public health crisis and perhaps further seasons of the coronavirus under control is if we permanently change consumer behaviour to socially distance. Is that a possible transition for the industry? I don't think so. I mean, I think temporarily I understand the need uh, for isolation lockdowns. And I'm based in New York, and it's worked quite well here. And I do think, you know, other people need to consider uh, where the cases are high, isolation and masks. But people are only going to cinema where it's safe to go. So Korea has been open for a very long time. They have a blockbuster released this week and a sequel. It's called Peninsula. And I think it's going to do very big numbers because people feel safe. Japan has been open a long time. We're a global platform in 82 countries, so we're not advocating to go to the cinema in a place where it's not under control. We're saying where it is safe and it is under control. The cinema is safer than a lot of places. You wear a mask going in. It's a passive experience. You're not talking to the people next to you. It's a screen in front of you. It's not live entertainment. If you do things right, uh, the cinema can be a very safe place.